Please. Craig, George Ackles had his foot re-taped. He said it's a little bit sore. He is going to play. He says he hopes that Matumbo just doesn't step on it. Greg? We'd rather that Dikembe didn't hit our way either. <laughs> Thank you, Leslie. Larry Johnson missed the three, and Georgetown with a chance to cut into a 10-point lead now. They start the same five. Churchwell, Brown, Harrison, Matumbo, and Morning. Brown down deep, and Ackles rejects it. We talked about how outside shooting would be a key in this game, and you kind of expected it from Georgetown, but UNLV has had its problems. Well, if you're talking about UNLV having problems, Georgetown, remember, is the best in terms of field goal percentage defensive club in the country. They will pressure every shot. That's why UNLV is struggling, and they haven't seen this kind of pressure before. UNLV also with the same starting five. Anderson Hunt, Greg Anthony in the backcourt. Ackles, Larry Johnson, and Stacey Augman up front. Now let's remember what Georgetown, I mean, what UNLV is capable of doing. They came out and exploded on Arkansas after having a slow start in the first half. Good look inside by Charles Harrison. He found Dikembe Mutombo 29-21 as Georgetown draws first blood in the second half. We are early in the second half, and that's a traveling violation on Greg Anthony. Georgetown got off to the quick start in this game, and it looked for a while, Quinn, as if UNLV had trouble finding its game. Well, I think they, they had to get accustomed to playing against the two people inside, Matombo and Morning. They did that. They got a slight spurt. And then John Thompson slowed the game down, which is more of the pace that Georgetown wants to play, but UNLV doesn't. But great teams can play at any pace. We'll see if UNLV can do it. George Ackles, a question mark as the game began, did start, then sat out some seven and a half minutes to eight minutes as he had his foot retaped. It was stepped on two nights ago. Brown gets oh. the step away and almost got it home. Ackles guilty of the foul. That's a pretty good effort by Joey Brown, and that's three personals on George Ackles. The, the thing that I've, I've said about the freshman is that, you see right here, he's got Ackles in the air. The one thing that Ackles surely doesn't want to happen is somebody to come down on his foot. He's got three fouls. But I said, now, Joy Brown, Churchill, and Harrison are considered first-year players, and I mean it by this. They now see decisions, and they can make them and make the right ones. Early in the year, they knew that a decision needed to be made, and they were hesitant to make a decision, and more often than not, they made the wrong decision. Elmore Spencer into the game for George Ackles. Oh. And Brown makes them both. You're only talking about fractions of a second as far as decision makers go with the basketball, aren't you? This is a quick game. Anderson hunts three, doesn't fall. Johnson has the loose ball. Johnson fakes the three, pops it back outside for Anthony who drives the lane and missed it. And Harrison has it. Oh, dunk. Robert Churchwell, 29-24. John Thompson, being known for a man-to-man, has gone to this zone and slowed the game down to his tempo. Johnson in the lane, and it counts. John Thompson thinks it shouldn't. But it will. The player's own defense, John Thompson's Hoyas have to understand. We're playing the zone. You don't let people penetrate through the middle. You see, Larry Johnson, he can put it on the floor, but he's so strong, able to shoot it, falling away, trying to complete a three-point play. You can't let people penetrate the middle in any defense, but in the zone, you may have three people instead of two people collapsing on you. Missed the free throw. Let me correct the score. It's 31-25 now as you see it. I shortchanged the Hoyas by a point last time at court. Oh, great nice play. Speed from the combo. Spencer came out, set the pick. Joey Brown went off the pick, and when Spencer stepped out, Matumbo went to the basket, got it back for the hoop. Now again. These youngsters are now making the correct play, and they force the action, and that's what you like to see if you're John Thompson. Georgetown has cut six points off of that halftime lead. Johnson, same move, same result. 
That was partially blocked. UNLV. Georgetown, 19 points in the first half. It's lowest of the oh, and the morning just fourth. Just drew his fourth foul. Well, that is it. That, that, that is really a play right there. Got to get him out of the game. There's just no two ways about it. And John Thompson is really upset with the official. All right, it's all inside on the tumble or shoulders now. Larry Johnson for three. That's the corner that Morning had been covering. And now with him out of the game, Larry Johnson is able to shoot the ball over Kelly. UNLV lead back to nine. And that went out of bounds and another Georgetown turnover. Ronnie Thompson in for Charles Harrison. That's 13 turnovers for the Hoyas. The Rebels have turned it over eight times. Johnson. Oh, he's got him coming and going now, Greg. He made the jump shot. Now he can take it to the basket. Just a little bit of shoving between Johnson and Brian Kelly gets the fans excited. Just saying hello. You can take it. That's another block for Spencer. And the Rebels are running. Augman. Offensive foul. Offensive foul. No basket. Take a time out to catch our breath. 15:41 remaining. There's a thread that runs through our lives. A thread that binds us together. Friendship, family, pride. These are the values that endure. The best things have always been those that last. Chevrolet. The truck that lasts. shots now and this is where UNLV gets you Augman Augman has his own rebound and goes back up what I'm saying is now Georgetown when they have to work that hard for a shot 
then they're, they're too tired to get themselves going on the other end. Johnson almost had the steal. They'll get a five-second call if they're not careful. This is where you get trapped. And UNLV is playing some tenacious defense well, right I, now. They went in that timeout, and that's one of the things they said. Guys, we got a chance to break them. You can just read it in their face. They are as intended. They've been all game. Churchwell, turn around. get it. Rebound, Johnson. Anthony fouled by Ronnie Thompson. 14-25 to play, 40-29. to Then the field goal percentages reflecting just how these teams have played through the season. Well, Greg, all of a sudden you can sense that the tempo has started to pick up a bit here. Morning got his fourth foul, and now they, don't, they can't get any offensive rebounds. Tark's group can get out, create some turnovers, get themselves some opportunities to take those turnovers and convert them to baskets. When we talked about UNLV and their pursuit of an unbeaten season, games like this really help a team to refocus, don't they? It really does, and it get, because, Greg, it gets tougher every time you start to play now. You know you're going to play very good teams. You've got to start honing in on the skills, and you've got to take every possession as if it's going to determine the game. And awaiting UNLV, should they get past Georgetown in Seattle, or Utah, Seton Hall in Arizona. Brown, he traveled. He did travel. That's the pressure defense. We were talking about the turnovers and how well they handle it. And now Georgetown going to go to a little full court pressure. But they got to watch because you got all kind of people that can handle it. The lob for Augman didn't work. Thought he was throwing that to Matumbo. He threw that one so hard. Anthony for Johnson. And John Thompson says timeout. That's a good timeout because you've got to control Anthony because you see what he can do. in this life we can all count on. Qualities we have come to know and trust. Pride, good friends, and simple, honest values. These are the things we know we can depend on. Chevrolet. The cars more Americans depend on. Is the Washington Monument on shaky ground? No, but the man who they call the Washington Monument may be. Watch 60 Minutes tonight. Regional semifinal action begins Thursday night here on CBS at 8 Eastern time. Here's Greg Anthony at work. Well, what happened is Lamont Morgan knocks, gets knocked off, and Anthony takes the ball to the basket, and Johnson finishes it off. This is a crucial time, I think, for the Hoyas because now UNLV can feel themselves get back in their rhythm. It's up-tempo, and they're out aggressive defensively. Quinn Alonzo Morning is back into the game for Georgetown. He went out at 16-43, and since then, UNLV's been on an 11-2 run. This is Lamont Morgan. Oh, did he invent that one? I go right at morning as soon as I can, and travel is called on Anderson Hunt. 
I've got morning with four fouls. I get the ball, and I don't care who it is, Larry Johnson, Stacey Augman, I get him out on the court, and I go right after him, get him out of the game. That's Anthony's recognition. He's got to do that. Three-pointer on the way, Harrison. Morning's got to watch out. He got away that time with a little knockdown with Anthony. Anthony did some acting, but the official won't allow that to happen again. Georgetown within 10. And Anthony really getting physical. These officials are going to have to watch this because this is starting to get way too aggressive. Anthony's throwing elbows. Joey Brown will not back off of it. Anthony forced the shot inside. Morning has the ball. Up ahead, Macombo got his own rebound. That's what's called a pass to yourself. <laughs> Macombo has 12. Go right, exactly, go right at morning. Shot off the mark and the foul committed from behind by Lamont Morgan. Well, you want to get out. First of all, this is a questionable pass. You do not throw the ball to somebody seven foot two from that far. Matumbo knows he's going to miss it. Just followed it to him. Matumbo knew he was going to miss it and just followed it. You don't throw the ball to anybody that can't handle it, particularly your center, because he can't put it on the floor. Matumbo got lucky, able to follow that in. Lamont Morgan out of the game. Robert Churchwell, 6'6", freshman, back into the lineup. For Georgetown, it's Macombo, Morning, and three freshmen. Spencer behind the back, bounce pass. Anthony ends up with it. Johnson for three. And Churchwell with the ball. Well, they, you, Georgetown is, just stays in it and fight back. Morning. Morning again. And he'll go to the line. The difference when Alonzo Morning is in the game, the team with Dikembe Mutombo is evident. It's, it's the activity that Morning provides that makes it difficult. You got two big bodies, you got to put your biggest person on Mutombo, and then Morning, being so active, gets a chance to get here where he got the offensive rebound, and now he got fouled. Jerry Tarkanian was signaling for a timeout. And now he's changed his mind. Alonzo Morning to the line. Morning, a 79% shooter on the season. Missed that one. Substitution. John Thompson getting morning out of the game because you can get winded and get your fifth foul. He brings in Brian Kelly. A little more activity, a little more action down on the defensive end. Good substitution by John Thompson. He loses about four inches in height going from morning to Kelly. Georgetown, meanwhile, enjoying an eight-point run. Anthony dances down the lane and to Matumbo got a piece of it. Be smart here. You got yourself on the run. Kelly got the shot off, and it'll be a two-shot foul. The foul is on Spencer. You got to regroup him. Terry Tarkanian's got to figure out a way to regroup him. And he's calling for the timeout right here. That's three yeah. personals on Elmore Spencer, and the Rebels want timeout. 11.03 to play. Their lead is seven.
Not long ago, one of the first Lumina sedans was bought by a family of five. They said they liked the gas mileage, all the room it had, and they liked the price. Since then, the Lumina sedan has quickly become the best-selling new car name in America. Apparently, a lot of people are winning with the heartbeat of America. That's the day Chevrolet. Now it's easy to win with the heartbeat. What is the image of a rebel? These are the images of a rebel. Canon's revolutionary autofocus EOS Rebel. Image is everything. EOS Rebel from Canon. So advanced it's simple. In making an artistic statement, one's personal aroma shouldn't do the talking. So I use Right Guard Sport Stick with maximum protection. A true artiste should be known for inspiration, not perspiration. Right Guard Sport Stick. Anything less would be uncivilized. Just a reminder, as we approach 7 in the East, coming up after the game on CBS, except in the West Coast and Mountain Time Zones, 60 Minutes, followed by Murder, She Wrote, and the CBS Sunday movie, Blood River. Right now, let's get you back to the game with Greg and Quinn. All right, Jim, 11.03 to play in the second half. UNLV's lead is seven. Some interesting numbers, Quinn. Georgetown shooting 41% from the floor. UNLV 38% as Lois Tarkanian can't bear to watch. But the rebounding, Georgetown has out-rebounded the Rebels 28-24. Well, with Matumbo in morning, you expect that to happen. Jerry Tarkanian knew that was going to be a problem. Without George Ackles being in the game, that hurts because Ackles is active, and it's hard for the Georgetown to match up, match up with him having Johnson and, uh, and Spencer in the game the way they have it as it's set. Ackles has his left shoe off on the bench now. Spencer got it in close, couldn't get it down. Kelly has the rebound. Georgetown's pace. They're in their zone, their matchup zone. Here's where you got to get the ball into Matombo and then have it swung. Get him at the high post, get the ball, let him swing it to the open side. Shot clock at 15. And now it's 10. Matombo. Oh, he's Looking taking challenge. Had it blocked, goes back up with the hook. Greg is taking challenges. UNLV leads by four. 14 for Matombo, along with six rebounds and four blocks. Johnson three doesn't go. When I say taking challenges, all of a sudden Matombo is an offensive player. I saw him doing a little acting. He's learned a lot. 60 minutes is next, except for those of you in the Mountain and Pacific time zone. It will be seen at its regularly scheduled time. We have nine and a half minutes to play. Kelly. And now Harrison puts it up. The board doesn't go for Churchwell. Called back in their zone. That was a good opportunity. Georgetown let that get away from them. And here's where great teams take advantage. Spencer missed it inside. Johnson followed. Because emotionally, Georgetown is a little bit down because they convert on their offensive end, and there's a tendency to try to regroup, and you lose your concentration. And that's how Johnson got the offensive rebound. Alonzo Mourning set to check back in at the first dead ball. I'd get the ball back to Matambo, let him fan it. Kelly almost threw it away from that position last time down court. Good save by Churchwell and back on top. Brown, Harrison, nice fake. Oh, that's great play by the freshman. Seven points. That was a shot fake. Talked about the shot fake. When it gets tight, people get a little anxious, and that's what Harrison used. Seven for Harrison. And 
Johnson for three. And Matumbo has the loose ball. Matumbo's logged a lot of minutes. John Thompson's going to have to figure out a way to get Matumbo a rest. The standing O is for the Hoyas. Georgetown enjoying a 13-2 run. Shot clock at 15. Air ball put up by Churchwell. He aimed it. Got to shoot it. Man to man. Johnson can take Kelly. Johnson back outside. Anderson Hunt. Got it. Three pointer for Anderson Hunt. 10 for Hunt. 49 42. Rebels. The zone defense helps Matombo, Greg. I talked about him getting the break. This is where he can get it. You don't come after. Uh, the Hoyas, they can rest. Harrison off to the side. Churchwell, no. You've got to be kidding me. Hunt. For that two. is a big play. That's four points. He got fouled. The non-whistle has the fans in arms with the exception of the UNLV followers. There have been several questionable calls in this game, or non-calls. The non-calls can beat you in the game, particularly tight games, as much as the, the calls that are made. Brown for three. <laughs> and Johnson has the rebound. They got numbers. Anthony with the dish. and just like that the Rebels lead by 11. For the third time today UNLV has run out to a double figure lead. Georgetown has come back the other time. Brown. Whoa. Big shot by the young fella. One of the things that happened, Greg, is Morning was in the game when Georgetown made their run. He's got four fouls, has been standing over there trying to get in. There hasn't been any stoppage in the action, allowing UNLV to make some de defensive conversions. We're under five minutes to play. Spencer. Didn't get it. Rebound. Georgetown. And still, Morning sits at the scorer's table. But if they can get, as long as they can keep it under double digits and they're better off getting it down the four with Morning out, then that keeps them in a good position because you always can go inside to Matombo and Morning. Brown for three. Oh, he's feeling it. Jeez. UNLV in pursuit of a perfect season. Pass inside. And the foul. Let's see who that call is on. Well, this like is, Brian Kelly. Well, this is a play right here. There is all kind of contact there. I don't know. It looked as though the official had a tough time to see it because from that angle, camera angle, is tough to see. There's no question in my mind there was contact there. They converted on the other end. So that's a four-point swing when it was all you're looking at a game. They were down six. They ended up going down four. A chance to go down two. Four. We approach four minutes for the game. UNLV 31 and 0. And despite all the run-ins with the NCAA, Jerry Tarkanian has kept his team focused and intent on repeating as national champion. One of the five times that Georgetown beat UNLV was in the second round when they went for their championship in 84. Stopped by Anderson Hunt, forced it up, and here comes Georgetown. And Georgetown is the last team that got to the finals, tried to go back and defend that final in 1985. Inside, morning, foul. 
You got to shoot that one, Alonzo. You got to shoot it if you get foul or not. John Thompson wants a shooting foul. Oh, he doesn't get it. Yeah, he did. Or he they? gave it to him, and, and he should have given it to him, Alonzo. But you got to shoot it and give yourself a chance to get a three-point play. Foul is on Greg Anthony. That's number two. Arkansas winner today. You have to think. Arkansas is the last team to have seriously challenged UNLV like this. Well, they challenged them very well in the, in the, first, in the half. first half, but UNLV comes out and they explode in the second half. John Thompson and the Hoyas, the youngsters, everybody wanted to know could they handle the pressure. John Thompson has taken the pressure off of them by shortening the game. Whatever happens in the final 316, they've proven they can handle this. Yeah, they really have. I mean, they have come to, you know, grown up. And as I said, they're first-year players. They're much more experienced. Remember now, Georgetown and Alonzo Morning said, he said, yeah, this is a tough game, but we play in the Big East. We play these kind of games every week. George Ackles back into the UNLV lineup. will take time with 316 to play. Getting to know you. Getting to know all about you. Not long ago, Honda and Toyota were known for the highest mileage. But today, there's Geo, the most fuel-efficient line of cars and trucks in America. Get to know Geo at your Chevrolet Geo dealers. Getting to know you. MetLife manages assets of over $125 billion. When 45 million people count on you for insurance and financial services, you can never be too strong. Get Met. It pays. Because there are races that last 24 hours, because there are rallies that last four days, there are high-performance tires called Michelin's. Did you know the cost of two 12-page fax transmissions from these Minneapolis newspapers to Chicago may surprise you? I got an exclusive interview! With AT&T Pro Watts, your business can't get a more accurate way to send a fax. She talks a lot. And our prices are extremely competitive. Even though the other company would like you to believe, they always save you lots of money. Wait a minute. That's news to me. Can I quote you on that? AT&T Pro Watts. Another AT&T advantage. This is Harry Smith. And I'm Paula Zahn. Tomorrow, Robert De Niro. He's starring in a new movie about blacklisting in the 50s. Plus, Gene Hackman joins us on CBS This Morning. Regional semifinal action begins Thursday night here on CBS at 8 Eastern time in Charlotte. Oh, look at the clubs lined up. Arkansas oh. against Alabama, Kansas against Indiana. And there'll also be action in the West in Seattle. The winner of this game will meet the running youth of Utah. Seton Hall will play Arizona. Great. Both of those are great lineups. You know, Utah's got to worry about trying to play against the winner of this game. But Seton Hall, Arizona, Terry Targanian knows that if he can escape this game, he's got his hands full in the West. University of Arizona, a couple of the ball players are here along with Lute Olson as they're uh, watching and observing and waiting. Came in, took a little victory lap. <laughs> There's Lute. His Wildcats, pretty impressive yesterday over BYU. UNLV shooting 38.5% from the floor today. They shot 54 during the regular season. You're getting a lot of layups. You can shoot 54, 4%. And that's a blocking foul. It's four. On Joey Brown. And that's number three on Three on him. See, but that's that's a good foul on because you get right here and you try to get in position. Yeah, I think he was still moving, but what it does is it, let, it lets Anthony know that Brown has good anticipation. Next time, that can be a charging foul. And Ogman will 
put up the three. And a good rebound by Morning. Under three minutes for the game. Georgetown trails by seven. This is a big possession for them, Greg, because it, it'll, what it does is it forces UNLV to go back and try to get a basket to take the momentum away. Morgan to the baseline, on the run, threw it up and gets the roll. Now you force UNLV to try to come back and get a basket. And it's tough when you got the big fellas inside, but champions figure out a way to do it. 225 to play. No! For the back, Alonzo Morning is gone. You don't make that kind of play. You don't reach over and anybody's shoulder. And Larry Johnson just got a technical foul. The warning was issued earlier for taunting. And as soon as Morning was hit with the foul, Larry Johnson went back at him. Well, these two play against each other in the summer, and Alonzo is out of position. No chance to get the ball. Anytime you reach over, you get the foul and see the left hand waving. That's Larry Johnson. The taunting had been warned. They have called a technical foul. John Thompson feelings about Alonzo Mourning drawing his fifth. Those are the meetings. Johnson gets the technical. Morning fouls out with seven points. Well, Georgetown was able to sustain and get themselves close without Matambo, to, without Morning. But to win it without Morning is going to be a task that I think is going to be too difficult to overcome. Larry Johnson shot at 82% from the line during the season. to UNLV's total. We'll go to the other end now. And freshman Charles Harrison, who shot 78% during the season, will shoot two. Well, they got a chance to get these two back, plus two. And hits them both and UNLV wasn't watching. No, this is another one of those times where Jerry Tarkanian has always done. He is more concerned about how his team performs than he is about anybody else. And when you got players that can get through the things that they can do on, on his team, that is a pretty good thought. Five-point UNLV lead, Georgetown with the ball. Coming up on 2-15 for the game. I stay patient right here for you, Georgetown, and I squeeze the ball until I get a good shot. Ryan Kelly in the lineup for morning. Oh, right in the combo, and he lost the handle. Too hard. That's, you get that ball in there, he fans, he's got somebody wide open. You got a hole here if you're Georgetown. Brown putting the pressure and grabs Greg Anthony. One thirty-seven on the clock. Ronnie Thompson into the lineup for Georgetown. Regional semifinal action both Thursday and Friday. The Southeast and the West on Thursday. The Midwest and the East on Friday. And you can expect to see games like this the entire tournament, Greg. You know, we've had Michigan State and Utah double OT, and we got Vegas and UNLV in here, and they're struggling. They're fighting for their lives here against this young Georgetown team. We you talked about the teams in the, in the Southeast and the West. Ohio State, St. John's, Connecticut, and Duke will come out of the Midwest. And out of the East, North Carolina, Eastern Michigan. Oklahoma State and Temple, and there's Lois Tarkini. Greg Anthony, five out of five from the line so far. Missed that one. Ronnie Thompson has it. A minute and a half to play, six-point lead for UNLV. They've got a score on this possession. Three-pointer, Harrison missed it. Yeah, you can't come down and take that shot. 
I mean, that, that's the first time I've seen the freshmen really show their, their youth right there. The reason you had to score, you were looking at a two-possession situation, and now you've got a foul because you've got a veteran team. Remember now, this, is, this group is, is a veteran in a lot of ways. The youngest player on their team starting is Anthony at 22 years old. And the whistle here. And the foul. We want to remind you, is the Washington Monument on shaky ground? No, but the man who they call the Washington Monument may be. Watch 60 Minutes, followed by Murder, She Wrote, and the CBS Sunday movie, Blood River. Joey Brown fouls out of this game with seven points and played a terrific floor game. Well, he really did. This is a great experience for the young players, but without Joey Brown in the game, I don't think you have the kind of control of the basketball and, the, and your flow because he's your point guard knowing your system very well. Now, United brings you the new World's Fair. Low fares to almost anywhere United and United Express fly. $69 to $159 to anywhere in the continental U.S. Hawaii from $149, plus great low fares to Europe and Asia. Buy your ticket by April 8th, then travel between now and May 19th. Seats are limited and significant restrictions apply. So call your travel agent or United now for our new World's Fair. Come fly the friendly skies. The Xerox Total Satisfaction Guarantee is one of the ten most significant events in the history of the plain paper copier industry. Significantly better than that of any of its competitors. The Xerox Total Satisfaction Guarantee. When you put together better products and services, you can put together a better guarantee. A consumer's dream. Putting it together. Faxing, scanning, copying, printing. Xerox, the document company. There's a thread that runs through our lives. A thread that binds us together. Friendship, family, pride. These are the values that endure. The best things have always been those that last. Chevrolet, the truck that lasts. tropics there are two kinds of heat love and danger sweating bullets premieres monday april 8th on cbs late night it's too hot to sleep welcome back to tucson greg gumbel quinn buckner leslie visser to the kale center on the campus of the university of arizona 60 seconds remain unlv leads it by six and greg anthony to the free throw line Number 50, Greg Anthony. 14 points for Greg Anthony. Here, John Thompson's got to figure out, come down and get a, a quick hoop, and then you got to get, you got to foul. And the person that you want to foul, if you can, is, is Spencer. Anthony hit them both for an eight-point lead for UNLV. Ronnie Thompson off the baseline, overshot it. Loose ball picked off by Morgan, rejected by Johnson. Matambo. You got a foul. You got a foul. Anthony, he's trying to get him up. You got to get it up. To, you got a foul. He's got a four point He's under four a half minute here. now. And Matumbo fouls Larry Johnson. That's three on Dikembe Matumbo. 25.4 remain. We talked about whether or not UNLV can make good foul shots. They got to revert back a little bit. They got a four point lead. A six point lead here right now with 25 seconds to go. They've got to start making these foul shots. They're going to be in games like this from now on. And this is when you get the test of the medal. Can you stand up to this kind of pressure? 
But I tell you, this is when it's fun. <laughs> this is the best time of the game. You saw Jerry Tarkanian on the sideline. Lots of talk this week about whether or not he'd be moving on to the NBA, whether or not he would continue at UNLV. And there is another oh, law violation no. of the combo. Greg, I think he's coming back. And I've heard all the talk, but I, I think Jerry Tarkany will come back and coach. Because, quite frankly, and he said he doesn't have many other hobbies. What he really likes is, is college basket, is basketball. You go to the next level and you got to worry about the salary cap and all those kind of things. I'm not sure he wants to be bothered with that. Johnson, two, 60 to 52, UNLV. Kelly rejected by Spencer and the foul is on Harrison you see some celebration because they know they have dodged a big bullet here but I'll tell you what when you talk about teams going undefeated Greg, you've got to be a little bit lucky you've got to not get people injured or out for any prolonged period of time and the most serious injury they had as a rule is Ackles with his, you know, four foot. Our Chevrolet most valuable players for today, Dikembe Mutombo for Georgetown, Elmore Spencer for UNLV, who came on and filled a big role for George Ackles, who did not play full-time today. Among his exploits today, Elmore Spencer chalked up six block shots. He did, Greg, and I thought it was great, but I want to tell you something. This tells the opposition that UNLV is not beatable, and in a one-game series, anything can happen. Final second ticking away. And with one second to play, UNLV will inbound the ball. They came out of it like a champion. They put it on when they had to. That's a sign of a winner. And you see an elated Jerry Tarkanian. UNLV goes to 32 and 0. They have won 43 straight, and they continue their push to repeat as NCAA champion. For Quinn Buckner and Leslie Visser, I'm Greg Gumbel. UNLV a winner. Let's send you back to New York and Jim Nance. All right, Greg. Thank you. On to Seattle for the Running Rebs. A great effort today by.